All right, so you finally saved up enough money for that Shure SM7B, but wait, you have nothing to plug it into? Well, don't worry, that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about audio interfaces at different budget levels and how to use them for streaming. All right, budget audio interfaces usually only have one to two inputs. And honestly, you really never need to go beyond this tier. So of course, there's the classic, the Focusrite Scarlett. They have different versions, but the solo input one is basically all you need. Then there's the Motu M2. So these have a really nice display on front to see your audio levels. And they have a really good DAC chip if you like to listen to music. But my recommendation in this category is actually gonna be the Audient Evo 4. And it has a killer feature, which is the smart gain. So basically you input something, you press the smart gain button, you talk into it and it'll set the input level. And this is really handy, especially if you're a beginner because you don't wanna set your mic input too high because then you're gonna start clipping when you get loud and you don't wanna set it too low because then you have to boost it. So it sets it at just a nice level so that you can still have some headroom to apply different effects to improve your overall audio quality. So like I said, you never really need to go beyond the budget tier, especially if you're just streaming by yourself. But if you're gonna be doing like a two PC streaming setup or maybe starting a podcast, you might wanna upgrade your audio interface in this case. So for two PC streaming setups, I like the RME Babyface Pro FS and the Audient i14. The really handy thing about these is they have a variety of inputs, but also they have digital mixers. So basically it's mixing software that allows you to route the outputs so the mixers have multiple outputs. So you can say, have one just be your microphone and then one just be your gameplay sound. Route that to the streaming PC. That way you can adjust different audio effects for your microphone and for your gameplay. So your gameplay, you might put a limiter. For your microphone, you might EQ, put a compressor and whatnot. Now, if you're doing a podcast, what I recommend is actually getting a full-fledged audio mixer and one that has a USB output. So these can vary in complexity, but generally speaking, the USB output is just a single mix output. And then you want these physical controls for when you're managing the show. So you wanna fade someone out when they start talking or you know maybe add some compressors if they have it on the mixer. You just want physical controls because it's a lot better than using like a digital mixer app, which is, can be a bit slow and clunky at times. So here's some tips and tricks when you're using audio interfaces. So the first and most important one is you need to know where to activate phantom power. This can vary from interface to interface but a lot of good microphones won't work without phantom power, especially if you're using like a SM7B with a cloud lifter. And then if you want to use these devices as your playback device, like hook up your headphones to it, it needs to be set as a playback device in Windows. And if you still don't hear audio, sometimes you need to check the monitoring level. So a lot of these devices have different monitoring modes, like you can hear like the clean inputs or the full mix, which includes like the Windows playback. And finally, a lot of these are mono inputs. So when you add a microphone source in Expert Broadcaster, it treats it as a stereo input. So the mono input may only have the microphone coming in on the left side. So what you can do is in Expert, you can set this to duplicate. So it comes in on both sides. so People don't just hear you from the left side. But if you have any questions or have any tips of your own for audio interfaces, be sure to let us know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more of these videos and see you next time.